September the 16th, 2011. Sister Teresa. Yes, it is the 16th. The 6th, 2011. Sister Teresa, would you give a blessing, please? And let us just truly be mindful of God's presence within us and around us. Coming tonight as very grateful people for holiday time and for coolness of weather, the gifts that you continue to give to each of us. And we ask that you continue to gift us during this meeting, gift us with open ears, open hearts, open minds. Give us a discerning spirit. Let us be mindful of your presence within ourselves and within each person. Direct all of our deliberations so that every work may truly begin in your name and in your name be carried to its desired completion for this prayer and every prayer we say. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. There are any additions to the agenda this evening? Uh, yes, I'd like to add the petition to a vacation of portions of right away on 7th Street and Pearl Street. Thank you. The consent agenda number six would be a an appropriation of 9 11 2011. Session under police department. No elected like personnel.
and restrictions for our area. My understanding is that is the only area of St. John that has covenants and restrictions. The East Monroe addition, according to the covenants, includes that complete area, north to south, east to west, and that includes the 20-foot perimeter area. In the covenants, I had arrowed across these restrictions. The covenants are applied to all of the East Borough Edition. That is all complete from that area. Under discussion and um, probably contention is that when the building uh, to the east of us happened on the new area, these restrictions were and covenants were not honored during that time. Now, I did draw attention to number 12. The East Borough Architectural Committee is fully in place. It has been all of these years. Um, at this time, they will taking Jim Rome and Stan Woodward are the Architectural Committee. I'm speaking tonight. They gave an endorsement for me to proceed with my concerns about the alleyway uh, easement perimeter around the East Borough addition. Um, Number 11 in the covenant states that the easements are for utility installations, maintenance, and drainage. Using the alleyway as a driveway is not one of those. Uh, the alley easement, now that is under contention because in the original plat, it does not label it an alley. On the city map, I'm told it does say alley when I visited with the appraiser. His map said alley. Ours does not. Our, when we purchased the property, it was a field. Uh, we were told that this is a will be our area from this boundary to this boundary, and the last 20 foot of all the property owners would be a way for us to get to the back side of our properties. All driveways face the street. And that's how we've had it in place. I've been here 16 years. The covenants and sales uh, came into existence in 1979. The alleyway earlier this year in March uh, was rocked for heavy truck use for the uh, area to the east to be built. I asked at that time, I had met with uh, John and Jill and uh, Mel with Nolan, and the rock itself was huge. I brought a sample of it over there. If you would just pass it around me. And at that time, my concerns were that as an allergy, uh, this creates dust. And uh, I was told at that time, my understanding was that it would be covered with sand or river rock or sealed in some way. And that is, I understand, the sealing is what you, I took a different way than you took. Okay. Um, I proceeded to wait till the house was built. We have watched. Um, in August, we finally got rain. I needed to do the alley. When I first moved in the first summer, I asked April who was going to mow that, and she said, that's Eastboro Edition. That's yours. So we have mowed it. We have taken care of it. And I needed to do something with it, but I can't mow it. Those rocks are too huge. They fly in all directions. It's a safety hazard for walking. Uh, this is why it has walked the alley. It's easier on her legs that it is the street. She has not walked it this year. And I still contend that there is dust. I've washed down my trees. I've wet and spray them down because they fill the air for our property. I would like the rock, since it wasn't covered, my request is for the rock to be removed and the alley returned to its former condition of either sand or a gravel combination. And at this point, it needs to be leveled again. There are definite dips. I don't know if some of you went out to look at the alley or drive it, but it is not the alley we had prior to March. Then, um, in concern, the rocked area that the East uh, family has put in means that they are turning into the alleyway as a secondary drive. The alley is only 20 foot. It is not wide enough. The bigger trucks a contractor with a trailer has to turn wide enough 
for them to drive on the lawn. I have passed pictures around. I didn't know some of you went out to see. This is the rock. I just stepped out my back area where my tree is missing and took a picture. This goes heading down to the south. This picture here shows as the trucks are turning out here, you'll see their tracks coming over into this yard right here. The last trucks were about eight inches from the sprinkler head. It is a concern. They do not have enough room to turn. The water meter is protected by two pole posts on the corner and their electric pole. That's all the area they have to turn. Of um, concern, the covenants say all drives enter a street. We use it as a parallel along the side. My lawn keepers, anyone who's working there, does not try to turn in. None of us have turn in drives from this perimeter easement or alley. <clears throat> the Eastboro Addition is a complete area. Anyone that is adjacent to that area does not have the rights to the privileges of the Eastboro area. And I feel that we're covered by our restrictions and our covenants. Are there any questions? Do you pay tax, taxes? We on pay that? tax on the easement between our properties. When the appraiser and I checked and mail checked also, that is not a taxed area. It is just a perimeter or down bar addition. Now, did we pay for it when we purchased the land? We were told that this is your land, but we're going to keep 20 foot here. Uh, you're, we paid for the sewer that was already put in. We're paying for our paved street right now in a special tax. I think I've got five and those years of that. And so the cost of the land for that area was quite a bit higher than anywhere else in town. Did we pay for this? I think we did. But technically not taxed. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Do you want the box for further? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on the agenda, but just a, a little bit of follow-up and a little bit of history. It won't take me long. Uh, I was the first home buyer out there, and was the first house up. The alley was sold as a private alley, and numerous times in the 80s and the first part of the 90s, I requested some city assistance, and was denied because it was a private alley. I do understand that easement allow for utility for utility purposes and and um, maintenance access for um, if there was a gas line problem or that which is under utility where it stands right now I do not know um, we've been made to believe at this point that that has changed and looking at the records that has not changed and it's not that we're not trying to get along it's just this was the setup. I have water lines in that alley, finally, which was signed off by the city um, because it was a private alley. And so our concern now is it's kind of becoming a horseshoe of traffic. Of course, when the house was completed, the, the new home, um, which we all graciously signed off on, um, 
that has gone down a, a great deal. And so what I would like the council to take into consideration is the premise on which we bought the property, and if that has changed, what the premise of those changes have been legally. And if, in fact, there's a unilateral taking over of the alley, then we're going to need some sort of restitution for that um, with some parameters. But you can't just sell property on a contract, and here's the parameters, here's the covenants, and here's what the developer said, because we paid for the alley, we paid for the curb, we paid for the water, and we paid for the sewer. The city did not have to pay for any of that. And that's what seems to be a misunderstanding as to what a private development is compared to a city-wide development that was just done, you know, in the old, older part of town. And so my question, or my statement, I guess, would be that is the highest concentration of residential tax revenue in the, in the city. And my question is, why is that? And the answer is because of that very nature of the way the thing was constructed, if the city would do more of that kind of pre-planning and development, they would find the same kind of developments taking place in St. John. And I know that as a banker, because of people not being comfortable with where to put a house because of some of the uh, lack of covenants and zoning. Um, so we're not trying to be uppity, as we've been kind of accused of, but there's a lot of dollars in a very small concentration, and we'd like that to be respected. That was the purpose of where we put the homes and why we put them there. And that's what I'd like to be taken into consideration before just unilateral moves are taking place as to that's the city's out. Um, that's really all I have to say. Well, I was reading in here on the boundary description, and below that is the dedication. And it says, we undersigned owners of the above described real estate have caused the same to be subdivided as shown hereon. The streets, alleys, and easements are hereby dedicated to the public for utilities and roadway purposes. That is correct. It's not there for development of other developments. It's there for access and utility, and we do that going in. And what would you consider roadway purposes? <laughs> well, it'd just be like someone deciding that uh, they want to access their property or something they're doing, and they just decide to make a driveway out of the alley. Um, I would consider that. In, in the spirit of the law, uh, what it happens is for. It says, apparently it gets for uh, access, for utility, and if someone needs to go down the alley publicly for maintenance, I think our contract says maintenance and utilities, um, I would expect it to, to remain at that. Do you think, I, I drove out there today, and they put in a front <coughs> drive, and then they have this alleyway. Do you think once they get settled in, they'll use that front drive more than they would the alley? It seems like they maybe used the alley while they were building. They uh, dropped her off. I wish Bob was here. They dropped her off for the drive and then turned around later that afternoon and dropped rock for that last leg off to the alley. Um, my assumption is the intent to use that. They have a lot of their traffic that makes a half circle through there oh. and continues to use that. Should it be barricaded? I would think so, yes, because they really don't have access to that area. One thing the covenants and restrictions are for are property owners of the Eastboro Edition. Any land adjacent to that is not a property owner of that area. And I, under, I understand what you're saying. If that was a uh, public alley originally, 
But we paid for the development of that alley and the lines that went through it, and that was all in the cost of the lots. For someone just to attach to it, I guess, I, I think is a, you know, they have their own development. They need to make their own alley to the north and out towards Dollar General or use their driveway. Um, but I would hope to think, you know, if they want to need to drive down the alley for one reason or another, it's not an issue. I think it's, it's the truck traffic and the white turns and just a lot of that sort of thing, which is, seems to be more problematic for those. It's not bothering me directly. Um, but I just know Laura and Lyons and Holmans have expressed it's, you know, I have been caught to where I can't get out, not knowing anyone's parked in that alley. And I have my stuff behind and I have a trailer full of limbs and you try and back a 16 foot car trailer full of limbs and you can't go. Yeah. Um, that's not right. We're the ones who put the money up and we're denied ability to get through there. Um, so, um, I, I don't know, it's, they just need to do that. Well, I will say, the road to, to be honest with you, what street is that now? It goes along the apartments to the east. No, it's Cherry Lane. Right. Is it Cherry Lane Road Street? I have been in the alley with driving down it with Kevin Davis who was talking over some things. And then I have been down this Cherry Lane Road street and that street puts out more dirt and dust than the alley does by the East Borough. It's, it's a sand that's well driven. Yeah, but I don't think it's, it's not sand because sand would not throw up that kind of dirt. It's, I think we probably put some kind of rock in there at the same time because it's a white dust coming up behind me. And it's, and it's the pickup and the trailer, or I could be in the car. So um, I don't know that all the dust is coming from that alley. So. Well, there's dust everywhere. This year. <laughs> there is. That's very true, Nolan. It's very, very dry. But, and I really, I could be totally wrong, but I don't know that the dust is killing trees or the grass. Um, I think there's other problems with the trees and the grass. Uh, the two trees we took out were prior to May, before the heat. It was stress. <laughs> Neither one had uh, tip light or what's the other thing that people are watching for? Pine well. Pine well. Uh, both both tree people that looked at them said they are stressed for whatever reason, and I did not bring that up in anything here. Um, we have allergies, mm -hmm. and everything that is in our landscaping is to work to protect the house mm -hmm. from these type of things. Um, the rock was put down in the alley without any discussion, without going to the committee. We could have brought up some of these details. I really feel that in these months there's a definite been a lack of communication. You know, if the situation was brought up, this is what we'd like to do. We could have come back with, okay, you want to put the rock down, what are you going to do after this building debris? What are you going to do to pick it up? What are you going to do to cover it? Um, you want to use this, but it's a private alley. Well, what are you going to do then to compensate here for this? I felt like we have been over backwards to let them use this and to get their property, the house built. Um, at this point, I feel that it needs to be decided exactly where we stand at East Borough and are these things going to be taken care of or not? Well, I guess council here would you like to make a decision tonight. Do you want to study this a little bit longer? I guess we need to figure out if this is a public alley or is it owned by the East Borough. It sounds like there's too many questions deciding not. And I would have to agree with that. I agree with that. There's, there's something that we need to really look at and really make it a definite definition on this right here because it's, 
having driven it today, it's, it's, it's really narrow and I was in a small vehicle. And then, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's what, uh, what you described as, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it is small. It's very small. Yeah. It's meant yeah. for access. It wasn't meant for. I, wanted, I had to turn around in there and in the small vehicle, I was in, had a difficult time doing that. And I'm like, oh, how could a large vehicle get through here? I just did not, I couldn't see it. I just couldn't see it without going over somebody's property to turn in there. So. Well, I think our position is just for the council to digest what we've had to say. Right. And I think Troy is exactly right. There's, there are questions, there's some issues, and look at it because I understand this is not a high priority compared to some of the things that the city does have to deal with. So we do thank you for the any time you do give us. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a few weeks or a month or two, just whatever, I think is, is, is fair just to, you know, to give us some consideration. And, to try and make it have an answer or something, that's not what we're expecting. We're just trying to invite you a little bit where we're at okay. with it, and we appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate you coming Yes, I have one question that maybe <coughs> Mel can help me answer, and we could let you guys ask your committee. But if we could give the new homeowners the rest of their building permit time, we could their yard established, and when all that. Ten dollar building permit elapsed, then the alley be, you know, whatever at that time, communicate with the new homeowners and let them know where we stand. I don't know how long the building permit's gonna last, but well, it's you know, for six months. To me, the biggest question is is it an alley for anyone to use, whether an adjoining property owner, like most of the alleys here in town, I know they have this covenant, but the you know, we have a signed document dated 1979 dedicating these alleys, easements, streets for public use. So I guess that to me that's the biggest question. They have your interpretation is of the code or is this what is signed here? Does, does that make it like any other alley in town? Well, this, that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying that we really need to define this right here. Yeah. Yeah, that's before we say anything one way or the other. I think that has to be decided. Okay. So we will keep it on our agenda. Yes, Kim? My problem is, did they ask anybody's permission? On the rock? On anything. Well, see, this is, this is you know, from dating put back to the sewer line or whatever, the alley in the cities mind right now and that's why it wasn't discussed with your people because it was deemed as it stated here public for anyone whether Eastboro or adjoining property or not public means anyone not just just you know the Eastboro edition and that's where that's why I think it was for say it has to be defined whether and if it's public then you know, it, is it necessary to say well, we're going to put some rock down this alley? You know, have we known if there's an allergy thing? You know, that is a, a cleaner rock than we use in a lot of cases. I know the city didn't put it down, but they, they don't, the builder did discuss with, with me that that's, you know, they were going to put some rock down. They did or did not? They did. They did, they did discuss before they put yes, anything yes. down. Yes. That was the question. Yes. Yeah, they he, did. Did, he did talk to me and say, with all this truck traffic and we could get some rain, I uh, said, so, well, it makes, makes sense because if it gets wet and you guys are trying to get in and out of here, it would just be a, you know, a mud hole. So. Well, the second question is, why didn't they just do their own road right to start with? I, can, I cannot answer that, but you'd have to ask them. Well, if it was deemed a public, if it's deemed a public access, they had every right to do it the way they did it. I mean, to access their property Correct. that way. That is correct. I mean, if it was an actual public right. alley, yeah, you know, just like now we have alleys through town, and you have houses on each side of the alley, and each property owner can go down the alley, turn into their property, or turn to the other way, and that's that's the way a public alley is. Right. That's what, well, that's what I'm saying, though. I mean, 
if it was deemed a public guild, they had every right to use that instead of going. So, I, and that's to me, that's where the, the thing has to be said. The dissension is, is that that is part of Eastboro addition. It is the feet when you, you know, it, it's not half the alley, it's completely both all the way around. The whole the complete view is part of Eastboro addition. And to follow the covenants and restrictions, they should have uh, gone to our committee and requested what they, they wanted to do, and then they could have been accepted or denied. That did not happen. One of the differences is private money put in those alleys, and public money put in your, your normal alley. That's one difference. Two, the covenants, even after the signing off of public access, restricts it to maintenance and utility. Building other developments is not included in that. It has nothing to do with maintenance. It has nothing to do with utility. And third, I was told for 20 years by this city office, of which I was involved with from at part of those years, that was, that was a private alley. They would not lay rock. They would not break. They would not mow. They would not weed. I mean, do any spraying or anything. We were on our own. So, we've been led to believe this, and now you want to kind of switch horses, and that's not fair to the property owners. And I know what I was told when I bought the, bought the property, and so there's going to be a lot of, of um, points to consider as to why we feel the way we feel. Because if that's the case, then there's some liability. I feel, from the sellers and the developers. But the big issue is, who put in the hours? It was not city money. And we were told that. This is part of what your lot costs. And that's why they're so narrow. I mean, they're not even you know, standard. I and mean, maybe some of the alley old parts of town. That's, that's 20 foot is actually one of the wider alleys we have in town. It may, the actual driving surface, you know, that you see... They look like a cow path, okay. Yeah. But, but, you know, 20 feet is one of the wider alleys. Most of them in town, a lot of places are 16 and a half foot wide. So My alley by our house is very narrow, too. So no one, the right way is south. So, so if we would have had a narrower alley, there wouldn't even have been a discussion because they couldn't have got the trucks down. <laughs> I don't know. Observation well, and that was running one three on the initial test. We offset, drove a five inch test well, we're 13 feet away from this this well, and uh, the nitrates on that well started out at. Uh, in the test, I took a sample at 120 minutes. And when we first developed the well, it was 1.63 on nitrates. During the aquifer test, at 120 minutes it was 1.27, at 300 minutes it was 1.33, at 560 minutes it was 1.36, at 900 minutes it was 1.42, and at 1265 minutes 
near the end of the test is 1.44. Uh, that's metal grams per liter as in for nitrates, and the spring water standard is 10. Um, that intermediate well, it went from 4.24 to 6.46. Part of that is, uh, I suspect, from what's bleeding in up above out of that 24. As far as effects in the aquifer, um, Test well 5, it's not a very efficient well, but it's typical of the test wells that get put in. Uh, we have 27, a little over 27 feet of drawdown in that well at 85 gallons a minute. In the test hole number 3, which was 13 feet away in the same zone, we had 6.5 feet of drawdown. So that tells me that we had uh, a pretty good communication to the aquifer. And we're reaching out a little ways with that. The one, and there was another well that was put in 200 feet to the northwest in that deeper zone, and we impacted that well also. So that we've got good communication in that aquifer. The real important part is that 70 to 85 foot well. We only had. Uh, a little over 0.4 feet of a drawdown, not quite a half a foot of drawdown in that well. So that tells us that those clay layers that we sealed off in the construction of those wells is keeping not only keeping the nitrates up, but it's also making us pull from that lower zone only. We're getting a little bit of leakage, but, but not excessive amount of leakage. If we control the pumping rates, with those wells, I think that you're going to have an opportunity to, to bump some very good water. But it's, those are going to have to be small capacity wells. Uh, I do not anticipate those being over 100 gallons a minute. Uh, with the information we have from that site, uh, if the site will support four wells at 100 gallons a minute, those would be I would be my recommendation at this time that they be operated uh, 12 on, 12 off. In other words, they not be pumped more than 12 hours at a time. You could pump two wells at the same time. Uh, and we would alternate those, and that would give you 200 gallons a minute. The number of wells gives you some redundancy in case something does happen to a well, you still have pumping capacity, or they do need maintenance, you still have pumping capacity from other wells so that you're not limiting the amount of clean water that you can pump. Um, at 200 gallons a minute, that gives you 288,000 gallons a day. Okay. Now we're still sitting at 850 for the high uh, fish somewhere in through there. Okay. That's 33 percent. That's 33 percent of uh, what the city pumped on maximum day this year, this summer, which is an oddity. I mean, I, this is the summer that's going to be for the record books. I don't know that next summer won't be for the record books. As well, they're talking like this may continue. But um, at 85 gallons a minute, we did not see a significant degradation of water quality in that deeper zone. What does that mean for the city? You, you're, you, you have water that you can blend with there at this time. Um, the other thing that it indicates is that, um, you know, I can tell you that in, in the 40s, the State Board of Health, that was pre-KDHE, put out a publication for, as they're called, their handbook on water wells. And in that handbook, they talk about well construction. And in it, they essentially said that a deep well is no safer than a shallow well unless the surface water or shallow groundwater is sealed out. And that's still true today. And we demonstrated that. And if we had not grouted those wells off as they were being pumped, we would have just drawn the nitrates from that upper zone down the water, which is the contaminant pathway into that screen there, well, and our nitrates would have gone up excessively. Um, 
much like what the city already has with the existing wells and the way they're gravel backed. What this does indicate is that uh, there may be some potential near below five to do the same thing, to find some cleaner water at the bottom of the aquifer. And you might be able to blend right there at well five. Uh, I know that the city has, has a, approved a treatment plant, and I assume that's still on track. Okay. Uh, the cleaner the water you can get to that treatment plant, obviously the less it's going to have to work. But there is a trade-off. There is the expense of putting in the other wells. I'm not sure if that's got you where you want. The well field management's going to be very important. Historically, uh, it's not just the city of St. John. A lot of the cities, we didn't have the nitrate issues. We didn't have the, the chloride issues. When I put in the wells, according to the standards at that time, which is not what we would do today, hopefully not what we would do today, uh, turn on the wells, we pump them. And then they just start changing the criteria on you, and, and now you're out of compliance. And with additional wells, how those wells are managed, how they're pumped, is going to be critical to the water quality for the city of St. John. The other thing that's going to be critical is uh, protecting those wells from future growth. Not that it can't happen. It's that there needs to be some, if the city is interested in protecting those wells, especially the new ones, then there will be, need to be some criteria incorporated in your social water protection plan if you choose to go that route to uh, minimize those impacts. Good information. We got a lot of, a lot of good data. Um, we have enough information to uh, design part of the wells. If we proceed with a well four well program, we would still need another test well to the northwest of that 600 feet. There's enough change there. We do have the test hole at 200 feet northwest. Uh, if the city opts to go with the four wells, then there will be another uh, test hole 400 feet northwest. And then we could do a test well at 600 feet northwest and do the aquifer test and collect those samples, much like we did for the one that we have now, then that would give us all of the data for the state to sign off on the actual installation of new wells because we would have the water quality data from the southeast edge of that well field and the northwest edge of that well field. And I'm going to assume that that's going to come back good. I, it will be another month at least before we get that information back. KDHE. So it's not like any decisions have to be made today. And I wouldn't recommend that you go jumping ahead until we do get that information back. But I don't I don't see anything that, that tells me that, that we've got a problem water quality wise. We took the the VOCs, the bulk organic compound samples, we took the synthetic organic compound samples, we took the heavy metal samples. The radiologicals, uh, I'm confident the radon will not pass the proposed standard that's, that the EPA is looking at. Uh, there will be very few wells in the state of Kansas that will. They've, they've just got that simply too tight uh, for anything to pass. Um, I don't really anticipate anything out of the heavy metals. If, if there is going to be a problem, I anticipate that that's where it will be, is with the heavy metals. They have uh, reduced the nitrate, or not the nitrate, the arsenic standard considerably. Um, and there are some cities that have gone out of compliance because of arsenic. But won't know until we get that data back. So we have enough information to, to drill a well? At right? that location, yes. Or a two well system right now? We have enough information to drill a, with what we have right now, uh, Troy, I think you could put a, a, a 200 gallon a minute wells in and pump them alternately. You could do a two well system right now without having to go 
drill any more test wells? I believe or? we can. Okay. That would be based on the, the pump test data at, at the test well site and then from the uh, sand data and the initial water quality data from the well 200 feet northwest. But if we extend any further than that, then there will have to be additional testing done. We're just, we're just getting too far out to rely on, on one well location for that. Okay. Mel has all that. He will. I apologize. I was going to get that to you earlier. My two-hour meeting in Wichita today turned into a five-hour meeting. I just got back. So. Okay. Any, Any questions? Uh, is this bill tonight? Like the end of your? That is. That is two today. Tonight. Today. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great ride. Here's the additional information on the Twin Energy Project. I'm glad I worked with Bill. Put together the electric and not the water. I have no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> Not so much the wind per se, and more or less the, the new rain that we talked about. We bounced around for a while here and uh, to see if we're ready to, to move forward with it or we're looking at something else. So, what I'm going to do today is right now make sure we all understand what it is we're talking about and looking at. So, then you can, uh, and there's a couple other things that we need to make a decision on. And I'm going to run this a little bit, but I think in your package you should have a, a ter an ordinance, a rate, mm -hmm. and the net metering policy. I think Don's got that. That's the other document there. It's kind of a booklet. Those are the two things that we need to, to look at today. Uh, the net metering we talked about fairly extensively last time. Um, there's two components of the interconnect policy that we passed a long time ago that allows somebody with some generation, whether it's wind turbines or whether it's uh, something else, to interconnect with your system. And from there, uh, this net metering policy and then the rate would need to accompany that. And so that's where we're at. The net, the net metering, we decided as a group, we had, I had four options. This, is a, this was a, a pre-developed amongst a bunch of cities, kind of collaborated together, and they came up with this net metering procedure with four different options to net out the the energy use. So we, we uh, at that point agreed to, uh, to do the netting where we would allow anything used from, from one month that over generated what they produced to be carried over the next month but then settled up by the end of the year. That's what that is. So we'll, we'll need to address that and if we need to have any more discussion on that final way because what I was talking about today was, was the rate. Uh, Currently, the city serves all customers under an energy-only rate. And the energy-only refers to the energy rate portion of the bill calculation. Now, if you look at this rate, I'm going to show you this. This Essentially, you have three different, or uh, currently you have a commercial and a residential. And we're adding this, or proposing to add a supplemental generation user rate. Uh, if you can look, the, the energy-only charge is right here for the residential as a... Uh, First 100 kilowatt hours per billing month, and then all additional is at a flat energy charge. Commercial is basically the same thing, just so you don't have that first 100 kilowatt hour clause in there. And then on top of that, you have a customer charge and a fuel adjustment rate. And that's all you've ever had. Now, what we're proposing is to do something that if somebody interconnects with you and is approved through the, the interconnect agreement to install, which, which um, uh, meets the criteria that the city wants as far as uh, safety, uh, tower requirements, whatever, you, then, then we would, uh, you would allow them to, to go into this, what's called a supplemental generation user rate. I'm going to spend just a second, just so we're all clear on, I think, on, on calculating a bit, on ca calculating this, because this is important to, to look at. Essentially, when you're doing this, you have a customer charge of $6 every month. This particular usage was read right at the end of the month, it was uh, 1,750 kilowatt hours. Customer charge is $6, energy charge went to 8.9, and 
and 10.55 for all additional. So these are the two charges you'd have. Now the fuel adjustment is based on the total amount of energy, and this 2.6 changes every month, but it averages out over the year. I just use 2.6 for comparison's sake, and I'll use that on that one. But essentially, that, that covers it, and then you take the total cost, and so when I refer to a cost per kilowatt hour, like the, that, that particular thing, that's the, the addition of the total charge divided by the kilowatt hour. So that's all you do. Now, on a, on a commercial, you want to have this column, and it would be 1750 times that, and it would be basically everything else is the same. And the customer charge is $9 on a commercial. So that's, that's what we have. And what, if, if you originally, on the netting out, if you just went with this and netted out like we're proposing there, the reason we can't do that, or I'm not recommending we, we can, but the reason we recommend this, is that it basically, every kilowatt hour generated would basically reduce this, which is, you know, on this particular thing with these rates and this. So, for instance, if they generated seventeen fifty that particular month, your bill to them would be six dollars, even though you have all your wires and everything else in there. And then, <coughs> then the next month they may choose not to generate, but so you have to have everything there and everything the same. So that's why you don't just net out like that, is because you would basically, if it's generating that, you don't have that, and you and you still have a lot of your cost, your fixed costs are built into these. This is this is strictly the the above your average uh, purchase power cost is, is a variable, and that's tied to that. So you can that that's easily netted out. But these two are split up between your fixed and variable cost. So what we're going to propose is kind of un untie that a little bit. This is a sheet that I've showed you before on a residential customer, just just so you can look at it. Usage is here in a month. Customer charge every month. Energy charge is based on these calculations I just showed you. Fuel adjustment. So that's a fuel cost as a calculation between there. And again, this is just basically the variance of what we expected when we built the rates and our wholesale power cost. In seven, eight years ago, this number would have been zero. But now it's, it's, the cost has gone up, wholesale cost has had a city bill here, and cost per kilowatt hour. So that's kind of what we, I've showed you on that, and that's, that's the breakdown of that. I just want to make sure I've showed you that spreadsheet before. Now, what we're talking about now is the demand and energy rate. Yeah, the first part is the energy the demand and energy rate is what's being served is being proposed and it has two components demand and energy now what exactly are demand and energy if we're all clear on that then then that's uh, okay but I wanted just to, to look at we're going to go back and review just a little bit this graph here is is what the city the city you, the way we get bill wholesale power by our our supplier they schedule our energy. Now, I've shown it to you before, and it's, it was much more um, smooth linear. I mean, it's still jagged, but it was, it was this, this way they've, they've changed, and they've had to require them based on the transmission. They have to schedule in whole megawatts. So one megawatt, two megawatts, three megawatts that you, that you schedule any particular hour. So like right here, and the zeros are just maybe either um, they, they, the schedule zero to balance out, but it's, it's minimal and it's a chance, but generally they'll schedule one megawatt and then they go two for a few hours and then three during peak times and then it drops back down. So you can still see the peak times during the day where they're scheduling, this is a month, where they're scheduling your, your time and uh, so it's one hour and this is 715 hours, this particular month had 700, 720 hours, which would be 30 days. And, and you can see the schedule. So, we have a contractor, we buy this base block down here under one, one agreement. Everything above that is under load falling agreement. And that changes in price uh, hourly, essentially. So everything above that piece, that base is the thing. And if for if some reason that base gets cut, then it gets back, it gets filled in with, another, with an hourly price. So, um, so we need to, need to keep that in mind a little bit. Now, the other thing is, this is a monthly load profile of a customer of how they might be using power. This is a sample customer. Uh, again, this is a, uh, hour one, so this is the first of the month. And if you can see, their load looks differently because they're not, you're not scheduling their load like, like you get your schedule one megawatt at a time. You're just reading the meter here, and then you read the meter here, 
the last day, and then you add up all the energy that was used under there. And that's what you bill them on. And then you go through, and then you take that lump, that lump of kilowatt hours, and you go through the calculation I went through earlier. And then that, then you apply the fuel adjustment, and that's how you do it. That's the energy only kilowatt hour. On a demand and energy for, uh, rate, you would take a month like this, and, and it, takes, it requires a different meter, but the meter will re register both that, which is the energy from here to there, that's used underneath this graph, all hours, and it will also take the peak one hour of the month, which in this particular case, and this particular month is, is the month of May. So as you can see, temperatures were peaking up towards the end of the month. You can look at that and see that the higher time. So you probably have air conditioning kicking on somewhere right in here. And in here, the air conditioner had to come on. I, I believe it was this way. But that, the, the very peak time right there, that hour, is the hour that would establish that demand charge. Okay? So we're saying, we're saying that, that the meter will then go, okay, when you read the meter, you read all the kilo dollars like you did before, and it would read that particular demand. And I, I don't have the, the axis here because it doesn't matter, but let's say that's 25 kW, then you'd read 25 that month. Now, why do we, why do, we do that and why is that important with the uh, energy? Because that allows us to um, capture some of those fixed costs. We break the, two, two, the energy only into the two components. And if for some reason somebody's generating periods of time throughout here, then they will save that energy only, but you'll still have the demand at some particular time that we'll read and apply the demand charge to. And that's where you're, you're capturing your fixed cost. It might be this particular, now if you're, um, uh, if it's a wind turbine, you don't have any control, just whenever the wind's blowing. If it's a um, diesel generator or something, they could be trying to run it during those particular times, but it's very expensive, you gotta buy the fuel, so you have to factor that in there. But a, but a wind generator is just gonna generate wherever, whenever. So it could, likely, it could generate, be generating these two hours. So let's say it was, these two peaks would go away because you're picking up generation, and your next demand would be this hour. So they could, they can, they can and will save some hours on peak demand. But chances are it's not going to be running all of them. If it ran all the time, it'd be running 24 hours a day, then you would essentially have no demand charge. If you had a, if you had a generator source, you'd not see any of that. You'd see a flat line, and you'd bill them for $12. We have a customer charge different. We have a more extensive meter, but just the customer charge. There'd be no energy because they're generating at all. There'd be no demand because they're picking it up. Let's say they generated every hour except for this hour right here. Then you'd bill them for just the energy from right here to here, the energy in here, which would be minimal compared to all of this, and that demand right there. So you'd get a fairly uh, reasonable peak demand, and so it covers some of your fixed costs. That, that they would, since they generated most of the time, you just get to net out all that energy, but they'd still pay you peak demand for that particular. It would be it would be a good month for for a wind if they did, or, you know if they just generated. But generally, you'll see them running even the numbers that they provided us maybe 25 percent of the time. So somewhere down the road there will be a, a peak demand established, which is what you've got to be there for, and you've got to always have enough equipment and, and material there to supply up to that peak amount right there. So that's that's I wanted to to kind of show you that, and make sure we all understand that. This this right here is the demand rate that we're proposing. Now it's a little different because this is one that, that Don has, has modified this I believe but I just wanted to, this is where we're looking at the demand charge up, the energy charge is 0 .055 which is um, less than the 0 .0899 and the 0 .1055 it would be that energy charge. The demand charge which would be those peaks would be at $12.50 per per kW for that peak hour, and then it would be a $12 customer charge, and then the, f the fuel adjustment would be the same. So when they, when they, on my example, if they generated all of it, they're going to save this, except for that one hour, they're going to save all that energy at that price, and they'll pay for that one, that peak at that demand charge. So that's, that's the, the concept and it's been modified a little bit and that's this, this portion of it. It says supplemental generation user rate right here, uh, uh, 15, 325. Now, on this particular thing, right now, if you can, ignore the second line here that's not up on my sheet. 
right now because we're going to talk about that. We want to get the concept of the demand and energy. There's an inside and outside city discussion that we need to have a little bit. We talked briefly about it last time. And I've, I've addressed it somewhat. We need to see if we want to go this way. Don went ahead and put this together, so if we want to move forward, we can either keep that there uh, or strike it and go with this kind of concept, with the, which would be basically that with the line out. Okay, side by side, this exact same month, um, and I apologize if it's, this is too elementary, because, but I just want to make sure you guys see the difference. The same month, same amount of energy, so that load profile we just looked at would be exactly the same, and they, they generated zero kilowatt hours, but they were on this rate. Whatever, whatever they applied to interconnect had been shut down for the month. And the so what would they pay? The demand would be, I, I, I established a 6.46 6 kW demand, and where I got that from, we don't know, because we don't have it metered right now, so we don't know what they use. But generally, a residential customer uh, will use it in the 31 to 35 percent load factor. So working that backwards, that's a relationship between the demand and energy. So I've worked backwards, calculated the 1750, the 6.46 6 kW demand would be uh, uh, a, a, a non-peak period of time, because a, a peak Summer air, oh, summer air conditioner of the home might run three to four kW. Then there any additional that you know would be your refrigerator and freezer and things like that. So this would be a month that you probably don't have an air conditioner going. And a, a, a home with that kind of load would have would probably have a ten to eleven kW demand during the summer, but uh, but you'd have more energy. Customer charge to compare the two, they are side by side again. They didn't generate anything. Customer charge six twelve. Demand charge, now this is the new portion of it, is a six, six point, you take that peak, and that's the peak one hour, 1250, 80, 76. The energy charge went from a combination of these two, which is, you know, 180 some dollars to $96, because it's about half the price for the energy, and the fuel adjustment is exactly the same. So under this, under this scenario, they're about, identical prices and they didn't generate anything okay so that's kind of what we we're looking for is kind of netted out the deal now if this particular customer uses less energy but the same demand as you can see this scenario the demand charge stay the same energy would go down the pri everybody's price goes down but this this price would go down more because they're using less energy of a higher price to buy conversely if it's the other way around it goes the other way if it's higher I meaning a higher load factor more energy in relationship to the demand, this number, both these two numbers, the 1750 would go up, the demand stays the same, this is going to go up less than, than this. So, so that's kind of how, the, how it works, and, and uh, a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, if, and, I, and remember this, because I want to jump back to one sheet I showed you before. Um, we'll, I'll show you the comparison of, of the whole year, and we'll look at that. Now, the energy, um, portion of the 5.5 cents a kilowatt hour. I went back in there. I took the average price per kilowatt hour, and I took what our cost of energy runs because that's what we that's what you're allowing them to, to net out, and we're not going to have to buy it and or generate it if somebody if somebody else is generating that for themselves. I just want to show you so you get an idea that the month of July, th this last month, this was our energy price. On the market, okay, and and what I did, and I'm just going to show you real quick. If I can, um, I'm going to pop up here and let the let it show you what. Uh, we get we get a sheet every day, or Mel gets a sheet every day that shows this energy prices. So this is this is January. This isn't the same one, but it's the same month. I've got I think I've got it in here for July. Yeah, this would be the same one I just had grabbed. But every day they send 24 hours. You can see there's 24 hours of what the price is. So keep in mind that that one megawatt is a fixed price. We've got a, that's a different contract. This is everything above that. So if you're generating below that, if you're cutting into the hours below that, that's just that's just the city's paying for energy and they're not selling it. So we, we've got to be a little cognizant of that. It's not too big of an issue right now because you're right there at the level, but. 
And the net metering, keep in mind, has a, has a limit on how much, how far to go down into it. But, but essentially, the hourly goes here, so you're paying $42 an hour. The rate you're charging is 5.5 .5 cents a kilowatt hour average throughout the time. So you can see, you have 42, that's 4.2 cents as opposed to the 55. And here you got 66. This is this would be on July 1st. They were charging 66 cent dollars, and then it drops back down to 56 the last two hours of the day. And it kind of trends like that for the whole month. As you can see, 61, it didn't change a lot from hour to hour, month, month to month, day to day. But you got some hours in the 30, 30 dollars, but it averages out. Now August, I don't know if I have August in here. I don't think, yeah, August was different because that was, you know, it really got a lot higher. You saw we saw some 78. I don't have all the days in there. I guess I only have a few days in there, but we we get them every day. Um, June was um, a little bit. Yeah, see, June at the end of June it got really hot in the last day of June, if you recall, and the price jumped up to 150. And I believe they called you generate that day. I can't remember. But they actually cut you guys, and they said fire up your own generation. So we're generating at at uh, you know 150 plus. That's what they were selling to. But they ended up cutting it, and we went higher. So any time anybody wanted to generate that particular time, it's it's good for everybody. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of that time there's not a lot of wind, and so you don't get as much of it. But if you do, you do, and it's and it's good. But but you but then you, you might have the next couple hours later it's at 52. And keep they're generating their net now 55, so they're saving more than it's actually costing in that particular hour plus. So anyway, that's that's the, I wanted to show you that, and I want to go back here and try to jump back in here on this. Um, so this 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 graphs graphs out July you're here, and then we uh, the hour you can see it drops down here to 30 to 50. Okay, this is this is May, the one we looked at first, and you can see it didn't change much from day to day. That's the hours, that's the low. So we had some uh, during the off-peak hours. This is the every day across peak. And then down here is the low, it's under $30. So if you take that one, that average is pretty close into that in that range of during that month, probably 45 or dollars Okay, now the other thing I want to do is, is what needs to be done. The city, like I said, the city needs to decide if a new rate is needed. Decide how you want a net meter, and if, assuming we, we want to continue on what we discussed last time. And if, and if you are charging a demand and energy rate, you need to decide if it's only one rate, as I had up on the board, or two rate, two tier rate, which is one that provide, that's drafted here that provides for a um, customer inside the service territory, inside the city limits, and one outside. Let me show you a little bit about that. I want to go back and talk, and go back, jump over here, and then I'll try to. Okay, here, here's the, uh, the demand rate. I just want to review this with you. Uh, if you, for the year, this particular, this is the one, so this is that same rate I use at the month of January. That's the bill I need calculated right there, if you can see, 234. And then, um, and again, this, this right here, as I put that little disclaimer there, this is a, a calculation based on the, 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 the uh, how the rates apply, not necessarily the, Quality or the type of project or the economics of the project at all. We're not even looking at that. I tell you, I tell you, look at the project as 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 it was offered because other projects may have different kind of usage patterns and whatever. So here's that same customer and is without without any and it didn't generate at all. So you see it called wind production zero. These are the same numbers we used demand and I calculated this demand based on this load factor. As you can see, the summer. You can see some air conditioning kicked on, and you see that, you see the load, as well as the usage goes on, right? So we got we got that. This is the wind, if there was any, but I have a zero turbine in there, but I just put zero being basically zero production. Not that there could be a turbine, I mean, there would be a turbine there. Wind production zero. So then you go through to calculate the 12 dollar demand charge based on these peak numbers, one hour, and then the energy charge based on that fuel adjustment. So then we come back here to the very end, and we see what uh, kind of what you know the difference is basically 50, you know fifty three dollars is pretty much it's a push basically from what it is if they didn't generate anything. now if they gen so so they're not really to the point uh, that it, it's going to hurt anybody that's on it 
to the point that they provide they use it for some reason some month they use a, a, a worse load factor it'd be a little higher cost but this is based on average load factor now here here it is the winds producing a 10, 10 kW turbine turbine at these load factors these are the load factors basically that's the ratio that they're operating that were given to us wind production would be this and here's how it works it's generating those uh, 1800 we, we, you only use 1750, so the, the, what you, the city provided was zero. Um, but we assume that at least one hour it wasn't on, one of those hours. So, and, we're, I'm, I'm, and the assumption is that that's on that peak hour. It maybe is a different hour, but, but the assumption was it didn't run during that peak hour. So they paid 694 times the demand charge, 1250, so they paid that demand charge. The customer charged zero energy because they didn't buy any from us. And zero fuel adjustment because they didn't buy any from us. And then the sell back was zero, but that was what I had on the previous label when we talked about that one. This just met now. And then so the cost was $98 as opposed to that first month here of $240. So they displaced all of that and all the energy that we, they did, which we didn't have to provide, they didn't have to pay for. So that's, that's where the minimum cost would come from, is to provide that they didn't run at, some, at least one hour. And it goes on there now. Then, it, then here, the, during the summer months, it didn't generate at this low factor. Like this particular month here, it didn't, really didn't run that much, and they factored that in. The suppliers factored that in, because August is not a windy month. And so they didn't generate much energy, so they still had a fairly substantial bill, and they paid that, that energy charge and went on through. Uh, for that what they didn't buy. Now, the only thing I didn't show here that, that we would be proposing under the net metering process is, is this particular month, I didn't carry anything over. That's what I'm about yeah, to I didn't carry it over because, uh, but I would, it could have, and it, and it would have worked. Here's how it would have worked. This particular month, you have 50 kWc, it's, you're 50 long, basically. The generally. So this would carry 50 over to here, this is uh, 36 over, so now you're 86 long, and you'd carry it to here. You see, so now you'd have a bank of 86, and here you're, you know, several, a thousand. Okay, slow down, Greg, you're losing me. Okay. I just want to, uh, this is where the carryover, this is, the, this is one of the options. Now, some people... Uh, carryover mean by what they produce? 1,800 versus 50, so you, you produce okay. 50 more. Okay. Remember, there's four ways we can look at it. One, you can do nothing. And just and, and several cities have approved this as it just just goes away. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what I'm showing here. Basically, you you, okay. you generate 18, 17, 50. You buy zero. The extra 50 just sync with the system. Okay. Okay. That's one of that was one of the options. The other option would be say, okay, you're 50 long, and and we will we would pay you for what that extra 50. That's possible. The only thing is, it's very difficult because. Those, you have to go back and which exact hours those were generated. As right. you can see, what are we going to pay them? Right. You, you know, certainly if it's 150, and we're buying for 150, there's no problem with paying them for 150, but it may, it may have been going at the time, as you saw, the price dropped off to 56. And we're paying 150, and, and it's cost us 56. It's, it's very difficult with the setup we've got, and that's, that's, that's probably a level of complexity that I don't necessarily um, think is necessary here. Uh, so that was the other option, but what we're doing is we're carrying it over. So the 50 would go into a bank, if you will. So now you're here, and in this particular hour, if, if my example, I probably should have put it in there and said this was, let's say you generated 1700 and you used 1750. Mm -hmm. So you theoretically have to buy 50, but you're, you're 50 in the bank, so you right. pull the 50 out and you'd, you'd be zero. Right. But here, now you're, you're actually 36 in, more in the bank, so now you've got 86 in the bank, right? So you go to the next month, and here, here you really generated. This is a good month, and, and and why is it a good month? Because it's windy in March and April. Okay, now if I if I would have went in and showed you the, the reason there's a little bit of problematic, the reason we had to spend a little extra time looking through this. I know it's I know it's tedious, but if you go to look at the prices on March, those were also the low times. But that's that's okay. And what you're doing here is more what I feel is more unfair. You're taking that long month now. So you're going to take that, what is the difference here in your head, uh, 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 1500 into the 86 you got now. So now you're almost 1600 in the bank. 
and here here a couple long so we're gonna we're gonna be banking up here and you know quite a bit and then now where your 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 negative or you're starting to happen to buy you would then pull this out of with what you banked and it would go on so probably here you bank that out to zero would be my guess because just looking at the difference here to here 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 now again this isn't saying this is how I think it's necessarily going to work. This is where the number, these are the numbers that were given to us right here. The key is that. Is it really going to blow 60% of the time? Is that going to be put, producing 10 megawatts? Or 10K, if it's a 10 kW unit, is that going to be producing 10 kW at 60% of the hours? Then if it does, it's going to generate that much. If it say it generates zero that particular month, then that, this, this would be the same as that because you're buying that minus zero. It's going to be net would be 43.20, and then you go through and pay, pay the same price. So the, the risk, if you will, of the generator is based on the, the, the owner that it does generate, what it says to say, because you're allowing them to net that out, and you're netting it out. So does that, does that kind of make sense right there? The banking and whatever, okay. And, th and this and here is, uh, is what we said right here, you would, Basically, if it works just like this without the banking, yeah, this is just this would just be the option that we didn't choose. And, you know, the banking is a more as a uh, better benefit to to this the end user here than, than just getting rid of it. Because if you're not, you you basically keep all that energy. They would save on our, their bill to us is fourteen hundred dollars and sixty one cents because the difference between this and this basically that's what we're looking at because they just basically didn't buy much energy. They only buy 5,800 50, without the banking, 5,899 versus what they used. Uh, would have bought uh, previous month of 24,600. Okay, so that's 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 how this thing would work. And you have a demand and energy component of that. And and, and uh, so with the demand rate, you're still able to capture your fixed costs that you have in the lines. The yeah, that's what this is. That's what this is doing. This is capturing fixed. So, again, the only thing that I, the only the only assumption I'm, I'm making an assumption that it's not generated on the peak hour because I just used the peak demand and applied it to the demand chart. If it hit that one, it would drop that. On, like I showed you on that one graph, if it wasn't that high peak, to say it was generating that high peak, it might be the next high that you would do. So there would be a little change in. Yeah, so there's some benefit. To them running under those peak times, and, and that's good. But generally, they won't run every single hour. So you'll get you'll get revenue here. So it's not just like a pure pure netting of all your energy, like you'd have to do right now. Um, this this here is is a. Uh, um, I just want to show you another um, another example of this is this is August 2010. Where you had your your schedule comes in. This is where they're doing now. It's not a it's not an hourly though. They schedule this. Midwest Energy will schedule this. I give them these numbers every month and says this is what we want to schedule. And I try the best I can to, to lay it in a, on the load and and based on that one chart. So if I think you're going to be at two, then I want to schedule schedule this up to to, to a two and down on down it would be a, a two. So we can see like right in here. This would have been good to have this. We had it one, but it would have been good to have it two. Assuming the price, which in this particular hour is seventy-eight dollars, we could have bought another megawatt. Or the, uh, this, the price we buy this is less than seventy-eight, so it would have been good to be able to do it. But you can't always. It's, it's a variable. You don't hit them all the time. You don't want to be long because it, it um, you waste. You just weep. If we're long. To the our supplier, we don't get compensated, it's just gone. So, okay, and then the last thing I'll do is, uh, uh, well, I, I want to stop there for just a second and ask if there's any questions on that. And what that does is what we basically did there was we took, uh, like I said, all the way we do our, our rate, and we broke it up into demand and energy, and we, we basically allowed the energy cost only to be cut out of it. And that's what they can say. Their energy only. Now, the demand will be there. Now, if that's whether you're inside the city territory or not, we talked about about it. Uh, uh, what would happen if it's somebody's outside the city uh, uh, city limits? Is there any change in consideration? So I put in. We put in a, a line there that shows you a different rate. 
Now I've got 1230. That's not the right number. It's a little less than that, and I want to show you how I got that if we want to talk about that. Now, um, I'll kind of start there, and Don built the same thing. If we don't want to do that, we just, we just cut that out and all rates are the same. Um, it, it, it's kind of, I want to get some feedback there if, if, uh, if it's something. What, we're, what we'll be looking at, is there a difference between somebody inside the territory and outside the territory as far as a, um, as a rate differential? What you, again, what you're doing, the energy cost is the same for everybody, right? The, the energy that we're netting out is the same. Is there, is there some costs that are afforded to people inside the territory? Because that's what we're concentrating all those fixed costs, if you will, into the, into the demand rate. Now, the way you guys set up your budget and your, your cost splitting, um, all of your utilities is in one bucket, if you will. And so any utility customer pays all the same and they all get the same. It all goes to be running a utility, except for what you transfer into the general fund. So you make every year you make a transfer into the general fund. And so that general fund then funds all the things you do outside of the electric business. So I looked at it um, about what the, how that a possibility to allocate those, those resources, but I didn't know if it's something that we want to... Um, Troy, you had kind of mentioned did through discussion um, as far as wanting to see what the inside and outside mm -hmm. zones would be. Do we want to go ahead and move move forward in there now? Are we ready to do that, or do we want to, or what? How do we want to do it? Well, I would like to, because there are services that people outside the city that are paying and transferring money. In, I mean, that they don't get them services. They're not covered by the city. I mean, they're not covered by the police department. They're not carried covered by the city fire department and other services like that. Where I really think that we need to look at possibly two rates. One where, like we have, if you want, right, like what we talked about earlier, twenty cents on the monthly demand. He's actually saying it's different. The, the twenty, the twenty cents was. My yes. guess. That was the initial guess. That was initial estimate, yeah. but I don't. So I wasn't. There, there isn't another precedent of, of doing this necessarily. So I, I, I was going based on my estimate, but I really didn't know how you guys allocate your funds and whatever. So I, I went in there based on some things I thought of. So I put a number in there, but I, but I did go ahead and thought if, if you guys are interested, I, 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 I looked at the budget, worked with the staff, kind of what you guys basically spend your general fund on. And then uh, and, and everything outside the electric business, because electric, everybody uses whether you're inside the territory or not. It's just that. And, and then went through and looked. So we, we can take a look at that. But um, if, if and you guys can do I, I took a couple things that, um, it's, th these are your budgets right here of what you spend in a, in a year. And I went through and I said, okay, well, what of these things would not be, I mean, police and fire is certainly the one that you looked at, but I think you guys do some overlap and there do some share. And, and, and I'll look at you guys to, to help guide me on that. But, but I said, uh, what of these things are, could you truly say are uh, only for inside the city customers that live inside the city? And a pool would be one you'd sit there and say, well, the pool is... Um, a city municipal pool, but can somebody from outside the city swim in the pool? I think the answer is yes. So that mm -hmm. same thing with parks and uh, even streets, community center, public you know transportation, some of this stuff. So here's what I did. Okay, and you guys can you guys can tell me. I'll I'll just throw it out there. You guys can shoot holes in it because I, I don't really know uh, what it is on um, exactly how you spend your money. But I looked at you transferring this year your budget. $185,000 to budget into the, into the general fund. And if, if it doesn't mean you always do that, that's what you guys transfer at some point in time. You decide what it is. The, five, the six year average, you transfer is $115,000. Okay. So but here's, your, here's your annual budget for these items. $185,000 theoretically are going to cover there. So I, I allocated it rationally, uh, proportionally. $185,000. 
two percent of it would go to this. Uh, you know, twenty-four percent goes to the police and fire. Of the this is the this is the one hundred eighty-five, and I looked at the six-year average. And then I went back there and I said, uh, municipal court possibly, uh, public transportation, I'm a, uh, housing uh, demo, capital project street. Well, then I, then I went in and said those are 100% were for city, city people. And then I went ahead and took that times that percentage and came over here to get this amount. So as you can see, this, uh, for instance, 2075 under that same ratio percentage. And this is using this. This is just for illustration. I didn't ever use that. And it was this times uh, this times that is that. And it goes, and we, uh, or this times is that. So that's that number. And one of their net, and then the here, I took the streets, which is your street, and your capital project street, and your employee benefits that uh, out of the out street department were these numbers. And I took over here, the number of roads that you have in your city limits is 19. And uh, then 6.8 miles of roads outside of the city, but within the electric territory. Okay? So total in that footprint would be 25.8 miles. So I took 26.4% of those miles are outside of the city, but inside your electric footprint. Okay? That's, that, that was, that was, now, uh, you know, it's, it's one way to look at it. So I took, so then I went ahead and took that percentage right here for these street deals, and I said, okay, well that's that's that goes here, and that's that's the same percentage. So I took the forty-five thousand, for instance, times the five percent is that, or is that? So that times that times that is that twenty-six thousand. So you've got uh, twenty-six hundred. So you add that up. We would have fourteen thousand dollars of your hundred eighty-five thousand would go towards um, could be could be cut out of your your demand charge. So then I went in here and I took the fourteen thousand and I took the forty thirty-five hundred. This is your peak demand of all those lines in one in one year. Or the whole year, this year is 3,500. So I took that number divided by this is four dollars per kW year, and divided that by month, which is 34 cents. 1250 minus 34 is 1216. So that outside the territory would be 1216. If you chose to do that this way, uh, if you chose to do it that way, if we you have to do all your customers. Not just because they're generating. Well, the only reason, the only reason, yeah. I, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. That's a question you had. I, I uh, the, only, the only thing that differentiates these guys is, 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 um, is the, um, the fact that we split those demand and energy. So we've, 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 we've concentrated the fixed cost into that demand charge where the other ones don't, the other rates don't have it. Um, so that, that would be a reason you may, maybe not do that is because we've, we've arbitrarily concentrated those fixed costs into one. And so it is a little bit more, but it does change that a little bit. You've just never had to do this before because you've never had that concentration. So that's something you want to think about. And again, maybe my road analogy isn't the best thing, but, but there, if, if anything, if anything, I mean, maybe, you know, I mean, your public transportation is a is a cost to, to drive. I mean, I think it's above. Is it? No, what is it? It's a bus, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, forget it. When you drive around the perimeter, and wants a heavy income that you'd be losing that's outside the city limits. I don't. You don't see any reason to do the split. No. Not, not on that outside the city limit deal. Keep it all the same. Yeah, just keep them all the same. This is the first complaint, or not a complaint, this is just an option. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. first. It's the first, yes. 
Yeah, Kurt. How come you don't include anything for police and fire when I, when I would get nothing from police and fire? Well, that, that's the one. Mike, would not the city fire truck go out there if they had a major fire out there? They didn't in the past. Well, I mean, house fire, probably. Mm -hmm. But. The police would have been called the police. If the police, if, if some major crime or something happened outside the city limits and the county wanted the city to come out and see the police would come, would they not? Or if the county police department was off on another call and something happened to a, a house outside the city limits would not... Uh, yeah, we're going to respond. Okay. And whoever's responding that's on duty, then they call either me or Matt, and then we come out and cover by their drawing. So the city ain't getting shorted. It's not something that happens often, but it, it would, it could happen. If, if so, yeah. if the situation came up. So you wouldn't respond? Well, yes. you would. Well, we so would, but I mean, there's no way for us to get a hose up out there, so I mean, we would... Whatever I mean, water's in their truck. Right. Okay. I mean, it's not like a house fire can touch John by any means. Well, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the only reason why I looked at that, because the, the discussion was that it was an overlap of those. Those two services, still the ones that we talked about, it's the ones that didn't go to page. Those would be the two main ones. Uh, list. You know, I, I, I do agree that I think if there was an emergency, like I said, the, the fire department usually would come out and, and do it as well as the police. So, um, I, didn't, I didn't put anything in there, that's why. Well, I had a fire in the barn, and they, but that's been years ago that they wouldn't respond to. But. I mean, now is that is that different now? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, if there's a structure within four, four, well, well, five miles, I think we could probably be okay. I mean, because you get some on city power for almost three. Uh, and you're, you know, most of the budget would go goes to call out charges and whatever. So, so that's that's other thoughts. I mean, uh, as you, again, if there's a, that's just the way I I came up with the logic because I, I was kind of asked to dig into that and I dug into. It. Now, if we were to use the again, even the 2011 versus the 2000 budgeted versus the let actuals, you know, I don't know if you actually budget the transfer this over there. If it was this, it would be, as you can see, that would be, you know, smaller. And then you'd probably be closer to where my original number was. But you have to pick something. And, and budget is probably a reasonable way to do it, for the, at least right now. But if you, certainly the last six years, you've averaged 115 transfer to the general fund. And again, I split it in, I split it average. I don't, I don't know, I think it just goes into the general budget. So to me, it's a logical way to look at it. The question, the decision comes down to, do you want to do it that way? If you do, I, th I would suggest we take that and change it to 1216 if you, unless you don't like my allocations here. Um, you know, I can, I can do that right now. I can make those changes and then we change it automatically. Or you could strike it all together, that line that Don, I think everything else is set, right? That's the only thing that, would, that nothing else changes within there. So. Does that make yeah. More or less, or did I? Did no, I thought you did a good job. Okay. Yeah, okay. I thought you did a really good job. I know it's been, I know it's been confusing. And I wanted to make sure we broke it down so we all know exactly what we're looking at. Yeah. And and uh, you know it allows it allows your this allows you to uh, this would be kind of what it would go back to looking like, but this allows you to um, basically let them net it out. You know, let them carry it over. There'd be a little bit of administrative issues, but it's not. We have to have a new meter. And then we have to just keep a running bank. But again, it's not something that's going to be massive because the net metering did limit it to a, a three percent of your total. So it's not it's not going to be like thousands of these around here, and it's also not going to be really large because it's it's, it's limited to twenty five or smaller. You know, your unit is what your interconnect agreement is. So. Uh, 
So I guess I, I would say that if, if we want to move forward, I think we need to pass. We need to pass it tonight. I mean, we would have to pass the the, the ordinance and the net metering policy. Yeah, and you start that one second. Before. I mean, that's, 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 that, I, I thought I'd put an option to you guys kind of put in. If you don't like them, uh, take a look again. So you can pay one and think about one. I think everything else in this thing is, is the same except for the, the one supplemental generation.
Okay, now the ordinance amending electric utility rates. What's that ordinance on? 110, one zero zero zero. One zero zero six is the number. And on this, am I right, Greg? Outside it's twelve fifteen or twelve thirty? Twelve sixteen. Twelve sixteen. If well, if that's the that's the way you want to do it. If that's yeah, what you should have. Yeah, I would yeah. say my, the, the the option would be twelve sixteen instead of twelve thirty for the out, outside. If you uh, want to put that in there at all, or strike it, whichever way. You got to approve it with with it in or with it out. Okay. So you guys want that, or do you want all the same? Everybody the same? Uh, why don't you strike it? Okay. You have to look at everybody's outside the city limits. Well, I agree, but. They're paying for stuff they're not getting either. You don't like paying for stuff you don't get either. Right, but I as a business in town, I pay more. Well, so our commercial rates are higher. So I think we better strike it for now. Otherwise, you'll you lose quite a bit of revenue. Mm -hmm. The list would go on. How much revenue are you talking? On our outside customer. Everybody outside the same limits. Short stock. Tell you. How many is there? Do you know what Not that many, but. But it adds up. Yeah. Well. Feel that they all live close enough to receive those services. That's my feel. I think they do receive those services. Do you get Troy? No, I don't. Kurt? I don't think we're receiving them. None of them do. And if you take 1.8% times all that, you're talking about. Pennies anyway. Figure out what you'd actually lose by making it twelve sixteen instead of twelve fifty. It's not much. We don't get near the service. That's the, yeah, but is it worth the, the headache? What? Is it worth the headache? Is it one point eight percent pennies to you or pennies to us? Both. See, so I think you should just. It ought to be more than that, I think.
it would be a bigger, bigger change for those guys. I mean, you could do it some other way, but the question is, is, is it something you want to do or not? I mean, because I like, you know, I use the road and then now and all that, so that was one thing I could really, because, you know, as far as a lot of those other services in and outside the city can use them, community center, transportation, parks, all that was usable by both of them. So the road is kind of one thing I have to head towards. Okay. Well, we can wait on this one. Council would like to, to table this one. I kind of would. Okay. I move that we table it. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any more discussion? Thank you, Greg. You did a good job for your extra time. Sure. Thank you, Kurt.
he was also saying that this, he, well, I guess you could tell. Well, I was just saying that, Mel, I don't know if you, you use those infrared at yeah, all. Okay. Yeah. System, you can, there, people are now getting to the point that preventive maintenance or you can take pictures of the electrical system and identify hot spots that you can't see, but like you can see a connector that's, that's heating up because uh -huh. it's overloading or, or got a short and you can, people will go out annually and shoot their whole system and all their substations and all that with those things. And, and find you can also the put them on the outside of the house and look at windows and see the heat right. that's coming out of your houses. That's what you're saying. I would, I would like to see us uh, go ahead and, and purchase that camera. Sure. So I'll make a motion to allow them to purchase that camera. So Is there any more discussion? I don't think the city can afford with all the modern technology that's available. It, they're within their budget. It's coming out of their budget. Well, that and doesn't, make, that doesn't the, make it right. The, they, they need that budget for repairs. If you're going to spend, I don't know how much is left in the budget, but it's too early in the year to deplete your budget and then have a fire truck sitting. I think we have like $37,000 left in our budget. In the city fire department budget. That's right, right. That's Somewhere pretty close to that, wasn't it, Jonah? Pretty sure that was the pretty good This county, county, county headline, correct? Yeah. So every time there's a big major structure fire, there's more than our fire department here. Not necessarily. Well, every time it seems like it. Okay, is. if it takes Stafford 15 minutes for them to page them out and get over here, if we have somebody trapped in a building, do you think that 15 minutes is pretty crucial? You still got to go in there and get them, so you're not talking 15 okay, minutes. Okay, so we're talking 15 minutes from them to get over here and then another 10 minutes to go in and find them. At the, le at the most. At the end of July, because we don't have August in yet, uh, they have spent 51% of their budget. Um, and I can't tell you on the pool quite yet because we don't have those numbers complete. But it didn't look like we were going to use all the pool budget by quite a bit. Well, if you remember right off of the thousand out of my county, yes. the city yeah. attorney division fund, and you got 2,200 donations. So and then the also, too, didn't the um, Farmans? Auxiliary? Yeah. Yeah, we have 2,200. Okay. So it's just not all strictly coming out of their budget. Sure. So the amount that would come out of your budget that you need now, Mike, is how much? Well, it was sixty five hundred and then less a thousand, right? No, less. Oh, yeah, your twenty two hundred's already off of that. Well, sixty five hundred would be. Uh, it, the total is eighty seven hundred, so okay. it'd be twenty two hundred. So sixty five hundred is what you have left. I think this piece of machinery can be used for more than just a fire. I mean, like you just said, it could be, Mel could use this. Police department can use this. I mean, it could be used for just about anything. And I don't really don't see the problem with allowing them to purchase this out of their budget. I mean, the last time I went to a meeting with these gentlemen, I tell you what, these people down there, these volunteers that go in there, one person stood up and said they'd be willing to do this for free if it meant getting that piece of machinery, okay? This piece of equipment is something that they could use. If it means the difference between life and death for one of our firefighters or somebody in a burning building, then by all means, I think it's something that they should have. Granted, we don't always have burning fires in, in homes around here. It's not something in, but it's, it's like... I don't know, there's a lot. <laughs> it, it's, it's just like a gun. Yeah, in, in the military, you better to, to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So you're talking technology, Kevin? Sorry, bud, but that's what it's coming to. You have no choice. Look at the whole picture. It's true. That's what it's coming to. Technology. I'll just go by the 
No different than Less than 5,000 population of our county, and we already have one. There's not any other people less populated that have two in the same county. I mean, it's just. Yeah, I'll check. I know. I know that for sure. No. I would, um, if my child was trapped in my house with one of them and I couldn't get to him, think about it. If you're standing outside of your house and you say, my kid is in this area, you have no idea if they've tried to get out another alternative route or where they're at. I mean, you have or, no way of locating. Or your wife. Or your dogs. I don't know. I would like to see our own city have their have their own equipment. I mean, you know, we uh, kind of had a pretty dis good discussion when we went in with the county on the building, and now we're they're, you know they like keeping things separately, having their own stuff, even though they're still under the same building. I still think it's a good idea that they have their own stuff. And I don't think they'd come to us with something that wasn't important to them. I don't think they come to us for blank and giggles. I'll tell you a good one. Matter of fact, I think it was the last council meeting we had. I was at home getting ready to go to bed. Get a phone call. Bobby Steinmates. Jill, step outside. I smell smoke. Okay, I stepped outside. I didn't smell anything. Just get your pickup. Drive down here, drive down the street. I smell smoke. Okay, smell smoke in a certain area. Still, it's dark 30. Cannot see nothing. So what do I do? I call dispatch. Who comes out? Michael does. Okay, it's out of my hands. I'm going to bed. Was that terrible me? Yeah, it probably was. But it, I'll guarantee you if he would have had that camera, he could have probably nailed it right on the spot if it was a fire. But we could not see it with our own eyes. And Bobby was having a fit. That man, he was, wasn't yep. he, Michael? He was having a fit because fishers were not home. And he, we it was in that area where we could smell that smoke. And we was even knocking on doors for people to see if they were home, to see if everything was okay in their house. So, had a motion on the table, had a second. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor, of, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. No. Aye. Is there any questions for Michael this evening? Thank you, Michael. Yeah. Police Department. Sonny, do you have anything this evening? We don't have anything tonight. Okay. Kevin? I'd like to ask for five minutes of the session for non elected personnel, the mayor, and council. Okay. Good. I have a second. Sure. All in favor say aye. Aye. Administration, John. Is there any questions for John this evening? She can't talk, so. Are you bruised too? That's awful. That's all right. She's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need another top with so her husband? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Legal. Don? Uh, the only thing we haven't done so far is a water ordinance. I've included that. There is a typo in the first line that says water instead of water. Other than that, uh, basically this encapsulates the new rate you guys agreed to, and the rest of it is what we have in existing policy. So, we just need to Part C and D is just the same as we always have had, but it's just A and D were changed. So, we'll make the motion to accept it. And it will be ordinance 1006 since we didn't do the other one. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're fine. I'm just stuck in it. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Aye
what date do you want it effective? We have a blank here. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is true. Um, Didn't we talk about waiting until first of the year? Well, I don't know if it was at least getting October through the busy year. or the high. Yeah, that's true. The high time. So I don't know whether we want to take no, it to the first of the year or what we want to I do. I think that. Oh, yeah, that yeah. Our own. Um, when we did it with the electric rate, I believe it was on the October billing. Um, I don't know if people are going to do a lot of watering in September since we're still That's basically in a drought. Can know. we just take it to the first year or what to the first year? Months? Yeah. Let's just take it the first year. 2012. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was in favor say aye. Uh, I was to say aye. Thank you. That's it. Is there any questions for Don? Is there any new business? Okay, the old business, the large animal wildlife protection. Both said. We're working with real water on that. Okay. I haven't really started, but we're going okay. to communicate. Okay. And the park sign in front of the Central Kansas land title. You want to keep that on the old business, or you just want to say, no, we're not putting up a sign? I'll say we're not putting up. Let's just, we're not going to put up a sign. We're not no. doing anything. Okay. Okay. And number three, parking in front of the Stafford County Annex building. Uh, Mel and I kind of discussed some things, such you know, having a area designated for parking now is that what you said well actually for the handicap area it could be done two ways you can either designate at that as a drop-off area put up a sign or you can have it so that there is like a, a parking area just to the east of the ramp area so if someone Park there if they could get out and if they're able to get in their own wheelchair, then they could go around the back of the vehicle and go up the ramp. That leaves the back of that area open for anybody across the street, or they could still drop someone off there with, with one vehicle parked there, you know, to, to let someone out, out and they can use the ramp to get up in there. The rest of the area, basically, you've got including the handicapped parking stall, you've got room for basically four cars there. Uh, through there. The uh, area in front of the stairway coming out of the annex is probably something that the county was wanting to look at as far as limiting parking right in front of the stairs so people could come out of the building and not have to go between cars to cross over to the parking lot across the street. Maybe about a 10 foot spot painted yellow do the handicap area and leave everything else unposted as is. If you do that in front of that stairway, will it lose a parking spot? No. By the so you can four, four, you still get four cars parked? Basically, you can get four in there one way or the other. The 10 foot isn't going to really, because we're, we're, we're about to our limit on that. You allow about 18 feet per parallel parking stall, and that's about all we're going to get. 10 feet is not going to gain us one more stall. It's just kind of not. Thing. Or we can leave it as is and just put the handicapped parking there and just let everybody do whatever they're going to do. So, what are we doing? I definitely mark the handicap spot so right. everybody knows. And, and give one handicap stall to the east of the ramp itself. So, if somebody wants to, can't, right. can't you know, get themselves across the street, they can park there and load and get inside the building, and anyone else can get in there. Well, then I say just leave the rest of it alone. Mm -hmm. okay. And then also too, I mean, I thought of this, I mean, we can tell that people are in the county and the people in the annex building, if they do have a big meeting or something, they could always put up a sign, you know, poke a sign in the ground, like, please no parking, we have a special meeting from such and such time. Because I think they've well, done that before, like, on the court day. They ought, be, they ought to at least talk to somebody about it before they just start poking. And that's true. Yeah, I know what you Whether mean. Whether they yeah. talk to you or the council or have to or Mel, the council yeah. or the police or whatever, you know, that's, you know, just yeah. so that just because well, all of a sudden they don't want somebody out there, they just <coughs> poke 
different signs than you're in. Right, I know what you mean. But like if they have a special EMS meeting or extension, you know, we know quite a few people's going to come to that building for an extension meeting or whatever. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, you know, maybe from noon to four or whatever. But what you well, they've saying? opened up that parking lot uh, to public parking now, and so that's really solved a lot of the problem. Yeah. Everybody's parking over there. Everybody seems to be happy. We never really have anyone parking in front of the annex. So, um, really, there, I, I don't think it's that big of an issue. But okay. So, we'll just do the handicap now. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. Donation to the Red Cross. Council, how do you feel about that? I think a volunteer that was here called to see if she needed to come back, and I just really didn't feel like you guys needed to hear her say anything again, but I told her that we hadn't made a decision that night, and we had a lot on the agenda. Have we donated in the past? Yes. We donated cards or something. Yeah, it was quite a few years back. You gave us some money about three or four years ago to help buy cots. Right after what? Tornadoes? Uh, I, it was, was, it was I think it was the Greensburg tornado. Yeah, I think I think it was the Greensburg tornado. So it's probably 07 or really he gave, uh, I think, a thousand bucks at that time. And I think what Donna's, you know, what she said that night was that she would love to see an annual yeah. donation. Is that, do I remember that correctly? I, I, feel, I felt that way myself. I don't know that she's, she's talking to all, everybody because they're operating on donations basically and if they knew they could maybe count on that then maybe she would have a budget to work with that okay. so what would be a proper amount are we looking she at asked for a thousand dollars that night i would correct? suggest if you do it come out of a water my fund because the other funds we don't tax any funds right. so it should come out of that place fund sometimes she was asking for how much wasn't it a thousand i thought she was asking for whatever we Offer. I think she asked for a thousand dollar donation. Okay. And I could go back in the things that she handed out, but I don't know that I have it here. And really, whatever we donate, she's going to appreciate. I'm sure it doesn't have to be what she asked. So it can't she's be. asked the same thing as Stafford too. Yeah. So, I mean, you're in the same ballpark as Stafford. Yeah. I can't in her region that she covers, I'm yeah. sure she was going. She said she was going to every city. In the region that she covers, so mm -hmm. she probably has for that. I I would um, think five hundred for now. Mm -hmm. We can always change it. Yeah. So, what do you guys think? I don't really know. I, I mean, know. I would rather I would entertain that motion. Uh, Year from now, maybe to see where we're at. I don't know what. Do 500 this year, and then you know we can always look at it every year. Yeah, I, I don't think you can find a lot of future councils either, so I'll do it every year. Yeah, yeah. right. All right. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Just what you got on 500. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. Or unless you guys, whatever you guys want, I just suggested 500. I was thinking 500. You read my mind. I know you did. That's, that's what I was thinking myself. It's 500, more so than 1,000. So. Well, I'm going to donate $500 to the Red Cross. Out of? Water and light. Second. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Close, close to him. Thank you, Council. So I think we have old business taken care of, besides the large animal, correct? No, it'll still be on there, John. Okay, we need to see if we have court out of the down there. Okay, yes. I'm going to move to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor say aye.